I come to you today asking for help. Utter Girl's team owner, Abarka, has gone missing. He has not been seen since early August and his family and friends are very concerned. If you have any information on the whereabouts of this little Spanish boy, please contact your local authorities. He's about 5'2", very chode-like, may respond to the name Jonathan, but it's unlikely. Once again, please, if you have any information or have seen this boy, let the local authorities know. Thank you. Hello and welcome to... What's this week? This man is so... It's week four, you dumb shit. But you're doing week three, dumbass. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Cram's Corner. I'm Cram coming to you live from the yet-to-be-named Bernard Asia Center. We're in full swing this week and with plenty of topics to talk about. My alcoholic friend Bernard may be peeping in from time to time just to say hello. Don't mind him. Let's get right to it. There were several close games last week as the Stuff & Co. took down N.A. In it to win it, Frick took down the newly named Lick My Percy. And the Freshman Slayers took down Cam's team, all by the same total of six points. The loss drops Cam's team to 0-3, putting him comfortably at the bottom of the standings. He's also spent $49 through just three weeks of play, leading some officials to believe that he may just be looking for new stand-up material at this point in the form of making fun of himself. In other action this week, the Colt 45s miraculously took down FC Cramalona despite having two players score zero points. It was a rough week for the Cramsters, but we'll bounce back next week, don't you worry. The ghost of Abarca easily cruised to a 105-90 victory over the Empire. What's not certain at this point is just who is running the other girls. Is it his little brother Albert? Is it a drone? Is it that girl who he always calls his sister but actually isn't his sister? Who knows? Only time will tell. The most lopsided victory of the week was handed down by the Burley Gents to the self-proclaimed official team to beat this season, John. The victory also gave the Burley Gents this week's Big Dick of the Week award with 111 points. That $23 is only a fifth of your daily food budget, Curtis, but enjoy it anyway. In a rare feat of double penetration, Curtis reinserted that big dick back into John several days after their matchup when he took Demarius Thomas off his hands for almost nothing. We evaluate this trade further in this week's breakdown. Here's what we know. At some point on Tuesday, John Mark posted a message for the league asking for a QB1. He also indicated that all players were open for discussion. Now, I'm just going to loosen my tie and settle in here a little bit because I'm st still just really having a hard time coming to terms with this, and I'd like to be comfortable while I'm explaining. So, at that point, he had some behind-the-scenes discussion with Curtis, who uh, pr probably posed that he was looking for a receiver. Turns out that John Mark gave up the league's eighth best receiver in terms of points, Demarius Thomas, to Curtis for... Russell Wilson, and Pierre Garçon. On the surface, eh, yeah, it's about even, until you look farther. John Mark, on his bench, had Matt Schaub and Eli Manning. Two very average quarterbacks, but it's not like Russell Wilson is much above that. When you look at the point production this season, Matt Schaub has actually produced more points than Russell Wilson. So John Mark actually gave up his best receiver for a worse quarterback than what he already had. Given that you still don't have one of the top 12 quarterbacks in the league, or a quote-unquote QB1, I would like to know what was going through your head at the time of this trade. Please feel free to video in and join me for next week's discussion to explain further. As the old saying goes, there's two types of fantasy football players in this world. Those who win championships, and those who name their team after their actual name. That about does it for me here. Join me next week as we discuss the Week 4 matchups and more news and notes from around the league. As always, I wish you all the worst of luck this weekend.